Okay, so John Soul, and then this is the, the Meg device. Oh, that's what I should show you. If you're interested in the Meg, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you a program I created that um, I'm using to design this thing. Well, John, if, it, if it's okay to ask, um, now, what kind of testing have you done with this so far? Uh, I, I uh, gotten a bunch of different uh, small coils that I put on uh, one that it, I just wound it on there, one or two layers of, of wire, to where I could pulse it. And I also made, oh, I wonder if I brought that. Uh, I had a, a big old hefty duty coil that I was pulsing this with. And uh, I, I could get a ring back, and I noticed that there, th th this this core had a characteristic uh, resonance at around 5,000 hertz. Oh, okay, okay. And so I, I knew that, that that was my target with this core. Now you'd mentioned uh, some kind of an anti gravity effect or something like that. Oh or? no, no, that's just other other, other devices. It, it's going to be. It's the beginnings of an anti gravity experiment. Oh. It's not a device, but it's an ex it, it's purely an experiment at this point. Oh, okay, okay. And, and and, oh, and this is two kind of counterwound, looks like counterwound coils, or? Yeah, that's one continuous wire of 200-strand um, Litz wire. So I'm, I'm going to go pretty high frequency on it. And it's a very unique winding configuration. And so the, the hope is just that the winding itself will create some kind of a field effect, or? Uh, yeah, it, the, 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 the theory behind it is the unified field is this... Um, It bends with the the, the the mass of a planet, slows down the expansion of the universe, and so it causes a dent in the space-time manifold. And so um, I have this uh, all the theory behind it is what I call a cosmic onion model. And anyway, the impedance of the vacuum space is actually translates into a, a, a force vector, depending upon the the angle of the temporal slope of the unified field. And the steeper the slope, the stronger the gravity is. And so, of course, the gravity diminishes with distance from the object. And so that's the inverse square law. And, um, and yes, uh, what this device does is it tries to create a stress energy tensor in that field. And then having that kind of rotating, it's kind of trying to borrow a little bit from the future and lend it to the past, <laughs> or now, take from the past and lend to the future. That, that makes it similar to the Meg in many ways too, doesn't it? Uh, no, the, the, the Meg is working on a principle, uh, the, the best way I can describe it, when, when, you, when you look at the, the, the device and you understand uh, the oh, sequence that the coils... Do you think I get you to hold, hold that up? Or? Okay, oh, the, the, the sequence that you activate these coils, is I activate these two coils, so this coil is, uh, let's say this is the North Pole, it's actually upside down, but that's right. Um, it's going to repel that magnetic field and make, force it to go in this, this path. And this blocks it so that this, this, this coil, its magnetic field drops completely. So for half a cycle, um, this coil feels that rise in the flux. And then you cut the power, and that flux drops, and you capture that back EMF. And then you activate these two coils, and the flux path goes this way. Yeah, yeah and, and from what I understand, basically, you're, it involves switching a magnetic circuit, right? That, that was the part. Right, that... right. So, so, so the, the, the coils are, are not actually providing the energy, because they don't actually see this, this uh, energy from these coils. It's this path. That, this is in the path. These are outside of that path. Yeah, and so this is feeling the energy of, of that neodymium magnet, and uh, I have magnets up to 250 pound pull force, and oscillating that at 5,000 times a second represents a great deal of energy. Now, so it does it generate more than it produces? Is it? Is well, yeah, yeah. The, the the point is, I'll put 100 to 200 watts into the input coils, and I'm hoping to get around three or four thousand watts on the output. Oh, okay, okay, interesting. But we'll, we we will see. I mean, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, now, John, if it's if it's okay to ask, if people want to learn more about your experiments, both the Meg and and just the, the gravity experiment, um, do you have a resource online they could visit? Or well, uh, right now, 
I've, I've shifted from being uh, the theoretical theoretician on cosmology uh, into an experimenter. Uh, I do have a website called Mysteries of the Universe. Dot info. Mysteries of the Universe. Dot info. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I have a, a cosmological model that's so fundamental that it, all the four fundamental forces of nature are described in terms of what constructs them, and they're not fundamental anymore. Uh, there, there's uh, quantum wave functions that construct everything having to do with the dimensionality of space and time, particles of matter, and they, the manifestations of the forces of uh, all the forces of uh, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear force, so-called. Turns out the strong nuclear force is really the tendency of um, quantum entanglement of the wave functions that construct the particles that build up the uh, atom. And uh, the weak nuclear force is the tendency of uh, creating a torsional stress within the nucleus over time that builds up to a point where it's like a rubber band that can't hold it anymore, it's snap. It releases that energy, and that's the thermonuclear meltdown. Huh. Mm. So, so a lot of, would it, would it be accurate to say to some degree then that, that some of what you've been doing is integrating in practical work like the MEG with some unified field theory research? Or? Right, right, because what, what, I, what I did is as I uh, did the, the theoretical research, and then I started looking at patents and saying, all right, I can understand how this device works through this theory. And so looking at the device, yeah, it'll work. And I understand the principle where, where and why it's getting this, this extra energy. And uh, it's understanding about shaping that unified field and harnessing the energy and the, 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 the property of electromagnetism that when you change the magnetic field, uh, the surrounding area tries to compensate, and it, it takes a, a fraction of a second for it to do so. But during that fraction of a second, you can harness that energy. And so that's why being able to pulse this at a very high frequency, there's a lot of energy to, to be had. Thank you again.